kicking off, we've got local interest in the form of Amjad. And then George Parker will take on Victor Crown. That could be a real cracker of a match, but some really good European interest as we look down the order there. Todd Harris. Yeah, it's very well finished. Had some work to do there. The young Qatari all squirts into the middle of the court, slight adjustment with the movement. Oh, he's unlucky there, created the opening. Just thumbs it into the tin, Amjad, but it was a well constructed rally from the Qatari. Shibini not quite looking comfortable out there just yet. Class act, this young lad. You'd have done the same, wouldn't you? You'd have just taken the last and then asked for just a bit. Ask anything for a bit of charity, mate. 10 6 game ball. Four game balls for El Shibini to take the first. There's the length. You can just. Oh, he's. Not quite finished the, uh, the rally off, but he set the point up quite nicely with the deep length. Just clipping the tin. Well, you're commentating, mate, and you're commenting about the lob, and it's very, very useful on this court. You've got a, a high ceiling, you've got some really good air time on that. I'm just watching uh, Amjad here, how high he's having to hit that length to get the ball to the back of the court. Anything just even below the service line, it's not reaching the back of the court. You can see it, they're really having to hit up and and through the ball to get it to travel into the uh, to the back. Oh, yeah, it's good, Amjad. really that finding his corner as well yeah. there, Amjad. He's slide, slide, please. starting to Five step ball. up a little bit on the ball. A lot more control to the back of the ball. Better there, got onto the ball early and took it in early. Completely wrong-footed there, Amjad. He was off into the front left. Nice shape of the, the hips and the body there from El Shabini. Oh, it's unlucky. I mean, he just stops the movement of El Shabini. Just rocks onto his heels here, the Egyptian. Not quite enough pace through the ball though to make it to the front wall. Things ever do go back to some type of form. I think that should be something that would should stay. Oh, he's unlucky again. He's a bit unlucky in the front two corners. And um, Jad, he's had a, a good number of opportunities to take that in, and he's just found the tint. Stayed very short. Good work again on the backhand volley. Six all. Six all. He's still in this here, Amjad. Hey, he's not back in. Nice bit of hold. Slightly loose though, wasn't yeah, it? Slightly seven, short. Six. Yeah, it was half court Harry. Bit of a gift. Work. Yeah, he's got him. 11-9. Match for El Shabini. Three games to love. Tidied up nicely there by El Shabini into El that Shabini front left corner. 11-6, Nice run out really for Mohamed El Shabini. Get used to the conditions here. 31 minutes, so not too taxing. Cold, cold conditions as always at the Khalifa Complex, but dealing with it nicely. Just holding off Amjad towards the end there. Three love into round two for Shavini. I'm 
and Joe Barrington joining me. We've got multiple Scottish national champion, current PSA World Tour player, Lisa Aitken. Lisa, great to have you here in Qatar. Good morning, Joy. They're just taking away George's and movement. And out, 5-3. Doesn't typically come out all guns blazing, Victor, with the attack. Again, just the real setup. There's a decent shot there by Crown, Nine, but it's a poor, four. poor lift. Very high in the front of the court. Really enjoying both players hunting for this volley. It's a great length. Yeah, it's lovely. That's one of the first seven, ten. Really accurate shots. Game he's ball. got to the back of the court and he's got immediate su success from it. George Parker still game balls with Crumat. Eight, ten. Game ball. Very quickly. Great get there from Parker. And again, I think it looks like he got that too. So well played. That was really Level well nine. finished. Game to Kruan. Kruan needs one game to love. Clever. It's really well played from Parker. Six, two. More settled and change that very quickly. Yeah. Hey. And up five eight. Again, this time going in the tin. Eleven eight. Game Given Parker. Parker. One game more. Well, the fight goes on. The Englishman responding in the second game. Living in Birmingham. Finding that all right? Yeah, I think it was a sensible move. It's good shopping. Yeah. Haven't been doing much shopping. We haven't had many tournaments. Enough. Joey, the bank balance One. is not. Two. No. I imagine. So if things do get back together again, you've got the whole new complex of the ball ring to get stuck into. That's lovely, Does straightened off. Yeah, Victor. it's third time. Third Two time he's four. done him in that area. He comes in, George Parker likes the pattern, he goes over for that forehand volley, split step, and <laughs> just eating the squash racket, Mosse. to get the racket up very early doors, particularly on the forehand side of the two. He's read it that time round. Four, two. Point. It's almost like he's he's made up his mind that this game's over. He's gonna try and lengthen the rallies, find the back corners again, and get himself back into it. That's a perfect, perfect length from Victor. Ten, four. Really found his Ten, range four. now. Unforgiving court when you're accurate. Six game balls for a two one lead. Sonic the Ijuk. Now, 11 4. Game to Krua. So, Victor Krua. Krua. Two Krua. Say boo to a goose. Goes off court. Looking. Another big point here in this match. 6 5, George Parker. Oh. It's a great drop. Stayed so short. Ball was good. I saw it good. It was good to me. Hand out, seven, five. It's very low. 
both know that these players have the capability of making the game last as long as they can. We saw, I watched Victor in Manchester play Declan James and he lost 3-2 in 67 minutes. Never really felt like Nine. Victor was going to oh. lose and actually he won 50, 51 points and Declan only won 44, but Declan was, was the, the victor, shall we say. Going around the Frenchman. Keeping himself in the rally. Now he's on the attack. <laughs> he asked and played. He was so quick. Right and he's not going to bother disputing that, which is decent for a Parker. Current. Two games all. So Parker the Punisher. Solid. So if you're balanced, you're in good position. You're going to take a good ball in. George Clark lovely. has done it again, and for somebody that's Four, two. tall in nature, he does get down low on those volleys. You see how flexible he is. That's lovely. He's got it back though, Parker. Oh, oh my word, beautiful what a finish. finish. It's a parfait. Eight, seven. He's pulling them out at the right times, Joey. <laughs> he is. That was a beauty. Oh. Victor was not, not in the line of his swing. He moved out just in time. Oh. He's opened up. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> He's just tidied that up so well. Head up. It is. Nine. Oh. It was a loose ball. We capitalised really well. Jabbed at it. And there. Little touchy touchy in. And Here we go. Oh, he's yeah. made the error, he's made the error. Number nine. He's made the error. Match to Parker. Three so George to Parker. 9-11. There 11, eight, is 4, the 11, response 11, to the crowd. 11-9. Ladies and gentlemen, qualified for second round from England, oh, George Parker. Fantastic match for these guys. He'd be frustrated beyond belief hitting the top of the tin at that game. But there, that's how much it means to George Parker. He's walloping his chest, his head. 67 minutes between England and France and it's George Parker that manages to sneak it 11-9 in the fifth game. An absolute blinder of a battle between these two to book his place up against Mohamed El Shabagi, the current world number one. That was unlucky. Just a little bit more head speed required in taking oh that ball into three. the front corner. Yeah, he's starting to look a little bit more strained than Kandra. I think that's anything to do with being in the room for a few days, PJ, not quite getting that Practicing. usual yes. preparation. It's hard to get that, yeah. It's tough. It's tough for these guys because uh, they've not been able to get in and really get the lungs opened Lead. up. If it's on and you're feeling it, then absolutely. Just shows how relaxed he is coming into this match. Down. That's a great touch from Kandra, but he nearly got it. Five, really is ten. fast around the court, court coverage. <laughs> he just did a little bit too much work, really. <laughs> Completely the wrong one. Just look at the distance he tries to cover here. He kind of stitches himself up, really. Take, really takes the long route. <laughs> He's gone straight for a sniff of the armpit there. <laughs> I just don't quite think he knew where the ball was. No, and that's the, that's the right decision there. Very impressive. I agree. I think he's definitely opening up the court far too early here. 
it's a typical trait, I would say, of Kandra. He's got some great skills, some great shots, but it's so important at this level that you're using that at the right time. Struggling to find length here. That's better from Kandra. It's guessed he's gone the wrong way. That's quality stuff. Brilliant rally. All four corners of the court being utilised here between these two. Yeah, he has been defending well up until now. Would that be encouraging for Kandra? It's always tough when, when you're tired, when somebody sticks a lob up where you have to try and generate, especially on such a cold, dead court, you have to actually generate so much power. Yeah, it's a big push. Clinical finish there from the midsection of that second game from Kandra, showing his class, the left-handed German. Absolutely walloped into the front right-hand corner there. Again, he's gone for the cross court, gaping hole on the left hand side of the court there for Steinman. Kandra, you can see he's already guessing, anticipating. Yeah, he's played it. These are hard yeah, well movements, done. very hard movements into the front of the court. It's another example there, Lisa. Just there's hesitation, isn't there, from Kandra? He's just got to use that athleticism, get onto the ball early and play it. Yeah, get the racket through the ball. Yep. You know, you've got the option there. You know that you've ran him ragged to corner to corner. I mean, you're left-handed. Maybe you can show him after the match. I necessarily think he cleared him correctly, but there was just uncertainty of the, of the opponent. Anyway, five game balls. That's very fast. That's what we want to see. When you get getting the opportunity, getting on it, really taking away his movement now. That's been the difference, isn't it? Those opportunities there. Oh, that's oh, lovely. That delicious. Have Just that for lunch, PJ. Clip that off the top of his toes there. Cross court into the opposite nick. I mean, this is rather kind of tennis-like. Comes up. He's looking a little bit more war-weary here, Steinman. And it's not something that uh, is uncommon, Lisa, is it? As, as fit and as, and as athletic as Steinman is, maybe on the traditional courts, You've seen quite a lot of players when they come onto the glass that, that does get exposed a little bit if they are not hardened to this particular kind of physicality. It's a very different kind of kind of movement, isn't it? Especially this glass court, PJ. Yeah. Everything is stopping short. All movements are, you could say, twice as hard as it would be on a traditional court with in this temperature. Eight match balls for a place in the next round for Kandra. Yeah! And he's absolutely delighted with that. Kept a very cool head throughout that match, Kandra. Terrific performance, you see. Tight work going into the front, and he's absolutely elated with that victory. He knew the dangers of Dimitri Steinman. 43 minutes in duration. Bit of a, a thumping in that fourth game, just six minutes. But it's... Rafael Kundra overcoming Dimitri Steinman by three games to one. Kind of hitting fest. 
and it's not worth it on this court. Oh, goodness me, he's absolutely gone over on that right leg, and he's how come Quickly. back. That was ridiculous. I mean, 37 years of age. Got to see that again. Hopefully we've got it. It was but like one continual movement. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Bit of a slip. There he goes. Back up, and he's up. Ready to rock. Six apiece in this crucial first game. Yeah, it's clever. Took these nice and early. Good speed of feet here from the Spaniard. Wrong foot, Scortier. Not often you see that. No, he's not letting Gaultier have any type of lead in this first game. Can't see the general letting this go. Such a crucial first game for him. Oh, yeah, that's that terrific. Pretty awesome. Wowzers. Even a bit it's of a head flick to finish it off, PJ. It's not a shot we is uh, familiar with Gaultier in that front right hand corner no. because of the open start. I can't believe I was there was saying, wasn't I? I was talking before the large lady had started singing, PJ. He's done well to dig that out the back of the court. It's good length from Gautier. That's well played. He's made me eat my words. I thought Gautier was going to close out at 10-7. Absolutely not. The tall Spaniard has managed to close out five points on the bounce. It's not the most relaxing of courts to play on because you know how dead and severe it yes. is at the front of the court. It just becomes a sh like a shooting fest into the front. Whoever can go in short with any kind of purpose off the back of a decent length is coming out on top. Yeah. Well, he was there to play that one. So 5-2, five. Five Gaultier Good. struts on in the second. Just look how much activity there is in the front two corners here. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. Way too much activity from the Spaniard into the front, and that's not really exposing Gortier. That is soft, strangely soft. So the French general gets his foot into this match after squandering three game balls in the first. Oh, that is absolutely magnifique from the Spaniard. Check this out for a backhand cross-court volley, Nick. Do drop in. Again, wrestling with those shorts. Oh, that's severe. That's heavy hit. That's one of Gautier's hard-low cross-courts. A real battler, isn't he? Pajaris. Very impressed with his fighting spirit. Seven, four. Yeah, he's Nine. it's now within one point. And still he wrestles with the shorts. <laughs> it will continue. Yeah, it's completely nine. invisible, that oh. shot. Very, very clever from Gautier. He's got the bit between his teeth now. Yes! Let's go, come on. There's the yes, which is Ten, nine. reminiscent Ten. of his junior career. Again, he's just adjusting those. Must be frustrating. Oh, he's got the lucky bounce. Oh, oh he did enough. He's <laughs> another yes. Gaultier saying yes on every shot in that back end of the third. It's like he is back in the juniors. 
But I love it. I love it. You know, he can say yes all day long. It's a really dicey area, that one. That kind of, call it no man's land. If, if the ball leap doesn't go very short or very deep, if you're willing to take that risk of hitting that ball through the middle of the court, you've got to get yourself out of the way. Because for me, it, as the ruling states, it should be a stroke. Well, Gaultier just Four, off. and there we go. A little bit of justice. Head out. Seven, six. done it again he started to fire that short kill in on that backhand side just sitting a touch too deep in the court but Harris has got to push up be a little bit more aware yeah it's a beautiful shot well massive effort massive effort but closed out so Gregory Gaultier manages to take to out Pajares from Barcelona. 11, Ladies and gentlemen, qualifying to the second round from France, the French general, Gregory Gaultier. It wasn't easy for Gregory Gaultier at all. Certainly doing some good having a tussle on that glass court. Just shy of the hour mark. Gaultier, after losing that first game, converting in four.